Hello everyone, Joseph Buer here coming at you with another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create a hair braid in Blender using nothing but curves. This is going to be an update to a previous tutorial I did a while back. Um, and as with that one, I want to give out credit to the people that I learned this method from. So uh, they are Aram Art and Nazar Nashenko. I'll link their videos on how to make braids in Blender down in the bottom. But with that said, let's get started. So the first thing you'll want to do is uh, jump into top view, make sure you're in orthographic mode, and then add in any primitive you want, doesn't matter, tab into edit mode, and then merge all your vertices to the center. Now with that done, you're gonna go ahead and click E to extrude on your keyboard. And while holding down control, you're going to uh, snap uh, this to the grid. And you just want to stretch this out uh, about three Blender units, I would say. And then once you've done that, uh, hovering over the uh, object, you want to hit control R. And you'll see this little yellow dot here. And you'll scroll up on your mouse wheel until you get about uh, seven of those. And then you're going to go ahead and click left click to confirm. Now with those uh, vertices made, we're going to go ahead and shape this a bit uh, until we get into the shape of a braid. So we're going to select these three first. I'm going to select my move tool right here. And then I'm going to, again, holding control, I'm just going to bring this down until I get about right about here. And then I'm going to do the same for this side right about there. All right. Now that that's done, the next thing I want to do is select these two and these two, and then just bring those up a bit. And then looking at them from this direction, I want to get this into kind of an hourglass shape, so I'm going to select this point and this point, and I'm going to bring those down until it reaches about there. All right, and you can use the grid to see this and make sure it's all even out, uh, spaced out correctly. Okay, so there's our shape. And then the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to tab back into object mode. I'm going to come over here to my modifiers panel uh, select Add Modifier, go down here to Generate, and then select Subdivision Surface. To smooth this out a little bit, I'm going to give it uh, two subdivisions. I'm going to look at it from this side, and we can uh, shape this just a little bit better. So I'm going to grab, let's see, I think I want to grab this one and this one, and I'm going to pull those down. I want to grab this one. I want to grab these two, I think. Nope, I am wrong again. So I think it's this one and this one. Yeah, there we go. And again, I'm going to snap those in the middle. Yeah, so we've got a perfect hourglass, hourglass shape. All right, and with that done, we're going to go ahead and add in a array modifier. So again, that's under generate and we want to make sure merge is turned on and with that done we are ready to convert this into a curve so we're gonna right click go down here to convert and then convert it to curve okay now we're going to go over into the uh, data properties of our curve and right under here under geometry, we're going to click on that. And then right down here, there's a submenu called bevel. And right where it says round, we're going to go ahead and increase the depth of that. Give it just a little bit of thickness. Very good. And if we want, we can go ahead and go into our modifiers and give it another subdivision surface uh, just to give it a little bit more geometry. And then we can right click and hit shade smooth if we want. Okay, we got a little bit of pinching right here, so we can uh, fix that if we want by tabbing into edit mode. And I'm going to 
right now uh, this uh, vertex right here is highlighted white meaning it's the active element so I'm gonna hit period on my keyboard and select active element right here and that's basically just gonna change the pivot point uh, to that vertex right there you'll do that for anyone that's uh, hot white so with that selected I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard and X to scale and I'm just gonna stretch that out a little bit until that pinching goes away that looks good right there alright and now we're ready to start uh, forming the rest of our braid so I'm gonna go back over here to modifiers and add a you guessed it another array modifier only this time I'm going to set this to three instead of two and then I'm going to pull this down until I get it into roughly the position I want it to be for my braid. So this looks pretty good right here at 0.16. Your measurements may vary uh, depending on how you do this. But with uh, that done, I'm going to add a little bit more thickness uh, to this braid just to fill it out a little bit more and I think that looks perfect okay so the next thing we're going to do let's go back up here to modifiers add a, another array modifier but this time we want to turn uh, merging on and I'm going to set this to 0.025 I'm gonna shade this flat just so I can see this a little better and what I want to do is I want to uh, line up uh, these three open points with these three open points so we're going to uh, zoom in here to this one and taking the X I'm just gonna scroll this back until I get line it up roughly with this one right here you can see it's starting to uh, connect so you may have to start entering your own uh, custom values so Um, okay, so now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and add in a curve, a set, another curve. This time it's going to be a path. So I'm going to set the visibility of this to in front so we can see it. I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to bring it over here so that the last point uh, or that the first point is right where the origin is and uh, because we're our pivot our transform pivot is still set to active element as long as this pivot is going white hot if we scale on the X it will scale uh, the rest of these points evenly across until we reach the end of our object here and now if I go ahead and add in a uh, deform modifier a curve deform modifier I can select this curve and when I go into edit mode on my NURBS curve it will affect the shape and the positioning of my braid and then I can add go into this second array right here and add more uh, points add more segments to my braid so that when I add more control points to my nerves curve I'll be able to control those segments if I want to get really fancy I can uh, go here 
to where it says fixed count under this uh, second array modifier and set that to fit curve and then simply select the curve and now what this does is anytime I extend or add a new point to my nerves curve it will automatically add segments to my braid uh, to make it fit along the curve. Very cool. Now, we're not done yet. Now we can get even uh, we can get even more elaborate with this. Say we want to make say we don't want our braid to just be a circle. Like say we're, we're going for something stylized. We can add even uh, we can add in another curve and use that as a profile for our hair braid to give it a unique shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my 3D cursor right here and add in, in uh, a uh, circle, just a regular circle. And then tabbing into edit mode, I'm going to select these vertices and these vertices and delete them. Then I'll go ahead and add in a mirror modifier. Make sure that the axis is set to X and Y. Make sure clipping's turned on. And then I'll go ahead and add in a subdivision surface as well. Set that to two. And now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I will shape this to give it kind of like, uh, the, uh, to give it kind of like a, a hair, uh, hair strand look. All right, uh, I think that's going to be good enough. So I'll go ahead and right click and convert that to curve. And now I'll select my hair braid and then under data properties, right under uh, next to round, it says object. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to select the eyedropper here and then select that new shape that I made. And you can see it's a little big right now, so I'll select the uh, this uh, the shape that I made and just scale it down a bit. And now my hair braid is looking a little bit more uh, stylized or realistic, depending on how you look at it. And we uh, we can still. We still have a pretty good amount of control over this based on our nerves curve. We can uh, select each of these individual points and hit Alt S to scale them either up or down to give our braid a nice taper. All right, well, that's going to do it for this tutorial on making hair braids in Blender. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next one.